That's well, why I was like, I miss looking at myself. It's less distracting. We're Wait, live. Is it? Hey, what's up? How you doing? Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Darn. I thought he was kidding. I was, yeah. Was so darn. we were not ready. Um, okay, welcome in. Hi. Everyone. Uh, I'm not Queen, the community manager. This is McLean. Mr. McLean. Um, what's your title again? Officially, gameplay programmer. Thank Unofficially, you. I fix everything. It's true. And he also breaks everything. What? What? Oh, that's me. Okay. I'm Horvath and uh, game designer. Game designer. Awesome. Yes. So uh, today we're going to do a quick Q&A, basically, on what we just released, so the mid-chapter patch, as well as some more general questions that we have not been addressing for a little bit. A little, awesome. A long I like time. that. Uh, so I'm going to start by uh, shouting out our mods and our team here that helped us on the setup. And I don't have all my information, so uh, I'm hoping that I will see it right here. You don't Yay! Know, you don't know all our is. mods by heart. Lucy, Mandy, <laughs> Matt. Since when you're a mod, welcome. Uh, Pat is here. Peanuts is here. Uh, Shiroku and Suggestive. Thank you for helping us on the chat. We don't thank Moobot no more. <laughs> thank you, Moobot. Thank Moobot you. does a lot of work. It's true. All right. Um, so this morning we released uh, the latest dev update. There was a lot of information on this. Oh hell yeah! Um, specifically on disconnection handling, hit boxes, and uh, sounds in the game. That was the three new issues that uh, we're concentrating on. So uh, if you want to go check it out, it's in forums. I'm pretty sure that uh, we can have a mod. Put the uh, link, link in Ooh, chat. Yeah, lovely, that'd be great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's even a, uh, there's even an interesting update on stuff that might be happening on live design with perk balance. Yes. Go check it out. You talking about mom? I'm talking about mom. Lots, right. lots of reaction already on the not even <laughs> confirmed change to mom, uh, but uh, we're gonna talk a little further about it maybe sure. a little later like uh, during the stream. Mm -hmm. We're gonna start by uh, saying that uh, we're planning a hotfix patch sometime next week. Ooh. So we're gonna have a lot of uh, fixes that I know that a lot of you are waiting for. Um, we have a few known issues if we wanna go over them. Yeah. Let's go through them. Through so, them? Uh, we have some known issues with uh, exhaustion not disappearing when it should. Uh, we have some known issues with the, the clown's pinky finger add-on misbehaving after you've been nailed with the, uh, with the bottle any time you're in the gas, not just right after being nailed by the bottle, but any time you're in the gas after that, it applies exposed. Um, please don't abuse this before it gets fixed, but we know, and the fix is coming. Yeah. Uh, points for completing generators in one go. There is a known issue where when you finish c repairing a generator, you don't get the points that you're supposed to get. Uh, this is terrible, I, I'm sorry. Is there uh, a workaround? There is a workaround in the meantime, just let go of the repair button before you complete it. So At 99%, 99 just like, I let go, go. again my points, and then I can just tap that. Um, window entity blockers are still misbehaving. There was a tentative fix that caught certain cases. It doesn't fix everything. Uh, there is more work happening on that issue. I actually yep. saw some neat stuff earlier today regarding that, so the work continues there. Neat. Um, and then uh, the last known issue is a repeat of the third known issue because the generator thing was just that annoying. It was that important. It was really tripping me up this weekend. I lost <laughs> so many points. Because I think I did three generators in one shot today and I was just like, oh no, I forgot Louis' tip. <laughs> Let go. Yeah. Um, I don't think those are the only, but those are the most important ones that we want to acknowledge that we've seen and are on top of. I'm glad that we went through them. Yes, and uh, I'll just ask here, uh, Peanuts, if you can uh, check out on Discord and give us, I know that in the, these known issues, some of them are fixed already in the hotfix patch that's coming. Ooh. So if we can have a, a little list of the most important ones that are getting fixed next yeah. week, that'd be awesome. The generator one has awesome. a tentative fix. Yes. I checked that one, and that's the only one I know about for now. Cool. All right, let me just uh, arrange my chat here. There we go, perfect. Ooh. Um. So before we go on, um, oh, by the way, uh, just a quick note about the dev update. Uh, if, we do, if we do not talk about 
the specific issue that is plaguing your experience, it's not because we are not working on it or we don't know about it. It's because we're going on uh, the more general uh, problems. Yeah, so game. things that most people experience yes. instead of just a uh, individual view. So for example, the generator thing is something we absolutely are um, looking at. Most people touch generators. Yep. <laughs> Most, not everybody. Okay. I've had some teammates like that. Yep. <laughs> I was talking about the runners. The runners. Yeah. That's you, right? You actually don't. You, so you're not into generators. Well, today like I did. I, I just said I did three, so I've caught myself That's in my right. own mouth. Yeah. But we're all good. I'm losing you. Hey. What's up, Gab? What's up? So uh, about the last uh, update. Yeah. So we brought in some new features. Yep. Do you want to talk a little bit about the feature we brought, yeah. we brought in? Yeah, so uh, we released this mid-chapter patch, and there's lots of really exciting stuff in it, like uh, new Legion and uh, Endgame and all that stuff. But uh, there were some smaller features. I'm not going to say they necessarily went under the radar, but things that I thought were super neat that I just wanted to talk about, because I thought they were great, and I wanted you guys to repeat how great they were. Great. So. Um, one of my favorite things about the new mid-chapter patch is that uh, games that would start with less than five players are now canceled. Beautiful. You go back to the lobby, you got all your stuff back, you don't have to you don't have to worry about should I should I bother killing these survivors or do I you know none of that stuff anymore. It's gone. Uh, obviously we're still working on the, the things that cause these kinds of games to happen and we're gonna be improving that. But in the meantime, you don't have to deal with those games. Yep. That and one. just like as a little side note, you will keep your stuff. Yeah. When well, you get the match canceled. That's the intended design. There is yeah. a few cases that get um, missed. like a missed. There's a there's a bug, and I know that it's already been looked at. So okay. I don't know if it's fixed though. Not yeah. yet. Uh, uh, there are like if you are having an infinite load during this time, mm -hmm. I would suggest waiting until the end of the infinite load if you really want to keep your offerings. Right. Uh, because you might, you will lose them if you alt F4 yep. or quit out. I think the maximum time for a timeout is five minutes. Yes, so you're, you're waiting five minutes. It's a, it's a fair amount of time. We're yeah. looking into that as well. Uh, but just letting you know, if, if you played some party streamers or some pudding or, I don't know, uh, escape cakes, you know, you might want to hang in there. There seems to be a common thread between all three of those add-ons, <laughs> offerings that you mentioned. You mean they're all point those offerings? Those are all point offerings. That is true. Yeah. yeah. Um, new offerings when? Let's not, let's not get into that's it. That's a good question. Re-added the theme music for DLC characters. That's So that's cool. when you click on them, and you get to hear their jingles. Their jingles. I think that's awesome. I think it's great. I actually didn't know that one was coming. That was a surprise to me personally, because it's not the area that I work in, and I thought that was super cool. So I put it down here. I also like. Yeah, I, I yeah that's yeah. great. Yeah. Um, adjusted controller inputs to improve movement control. I got a lot of questions about this one. Yes. Awesome. Uh, I think you were the genius behind it. No, actually, well, somebody else found it on the floor, right. and they brought it up to me, and I was like, oh my gosh, this would be something great to fix. Right. So basically, uh, when you were going in the angles yep. of the joystick, yep. you were actually moving at a lower speed, right? So now we've capped it, so now you're going to be moving at 100% no matter what direction you're heading in. So this is uh, specifically for, for controllers. It's for controllers. So yep. this is already working as uh, such on keyboard yep. uh, and mouse. Uh, so now the controller's support should be better in this yeah. regard. I know that there are still things to work on with the controllers. Mm -hmm. We're looking at uh, controller sensitivity. This yeah. has come back often. Uh, we're not sure exactly when they will come through, but this is something we are looking to improve as well. So players were essentially losing speed while trying to do tight turns or spins because of the, uh, the joystick sensitivity curves. Yeah. And we got, that, uh, we got that smoothed out. We got that smoothed That's out. That's awesome. Uh, I've got here something uh, adjusted the time that the notification bubbles are displayed down to five seconds. Yeah, they used to be ten. They used to be ten seconds. So we, we would get a lot of complaints about, oh, I, I hooked somebody and then um, we, I have a, got a big black circle in the middle of my screen and now I, I can't see anything. Or somebody got hooked and now I can't see anything. I can't see the killer coming straight at me for ten seconds. Mm -hmm. So we heard you and we reduced those to five seconds. Woo. Uh, so this is for the notification bubbles like exit switches, generators, hooks, spare traps. Yeah, this is something that kind of uh, went under the radar. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I thought so. I thought, you know what, that's just that's a cool quality of life change that I wanted to mention. Uh, another amazing quality of life change, for, for me anyway, was oh, me too. maze walls in cold wind farms. I think a uh, long, long time ago, in the olden <laughs> days, we tried a little experiment of what would it be like if you could see through the walls on certain maps? You know, how would that change up the chases? 
As it turns out, we didn't really like how it changed up the chases. Yep. And uh, we but, kind of been waiting for this change for a long yeah. time. But yeah. the corn map were still uh, like that, though. Right. Um, so here it is. It's finally arrived. The maze walls on Cold Wind have been boarded up, so you can't see through them so easily. And I thought that was very cool. Yeah. So before, you'd be able to see exactly what the movements were, well, in most cases, yeah. of what the survivor was doing or the killer was doing, which allowed you much more time than waiting to see the red stain come around the corner. Yeah. Uh, it turns out that it kind of removed a lot of the mind games that we like so much. Yes, it's true. There wasn't any real mystery about whether someone had double back or anything. You're just, I see exactly where you are. I see you. Yeah. Uh, it was just kind of, oh, wait. it kind of just acted like a fence. I think I have, I have something for this. There you go. All right. Um, I've got a neat note here about RNG on windows in the treatment theater. Oh, yes, hospital. Let's talk about the hospital. So uh, we were getting a lot of complaints about the windows lining up or otherwise misbehaving in the hospital. It's true. Or being too many of them. Yeah, or just being plain old too many. So uh, our level guru went in and reduced the randomness, said, this is how it should be. Let's remove the possibility for these abusive cases to even spawn. So I would be, I really want to actually hear back from you guys about whether you've noticed the difference. This is one of those subtle ones that you might not even realize until like you're looking for it. Yeah. Because typically when the maps are working right, you don't think about, wow, look, this map generated perfectly without any really abusable stuff. Like it only really bothers you when something happens and like three windows spawn right next to each other and that's what you'll remember. So I want you guys to take a note of when you play on the hospital and say, wow, this level looks right. It seems to be correctly generated. And then let me know, because I want to. I want to hear. Thank you, Walker. Thank you. <laughs> uh, we got a rework on character collision in basement stairs to prevent hostage situations. I think this okay. one. Okay. Yeah, this one had uh, a lot of noise when yeah. we released it, and uh, that's because also we didn't give a much more information than just that that one line yeah. of, "Hey, by the way, we removed collision. Have fun." Yeah. Uh, so can you give us a little bit more details sure. on the numbers on this? Um, there aren't too many numbers, but the, the mechanism is essentially that the, the character collisions, we have put it something in to let them shrink when two characters are colliding into each other. And we only enable this in certain places. At the moment, we decided it would be too risky to just put this change across the whole game and say, if you're touching anybody at any time, we'll just shrink your character collision and then let you get stuck in all kinds of crazy places. At the moment, we thought, let's just <laughs> apply this where we need it. It is too bad that it's a little bit inconsistent, but we sort of, we added this because we thought this was necessary in certain edge cases. So um, to play the devil's advocate here, yes. because uh, we've, we've heard a lot of feedback on both sides. Um, the, uh, the, the loss of collision seems to happen really, really quickly, which mm -hmm. prevents some kind of uh, gameplay there. Mm -hmm. um, what's your thought on that? I think we put this in specifically to stop uh, killers from trapping like multiple survivors in the basement during the end game uh, because it was kind of too much reward uh, and it felt almost legitimate because the end game will sacrifice these survivors and then the game ends which was a big contrast to the previous types of griefing you could do where you would just trap people and then hold them hostage which was very obvious griefing but um, a player who's not necessarily up on what we're doing might not know about all this and might say oh here's the timer I can block them this seems legit uh, so we really wanted to make it clear that that's really not the intended behavior. It's not so much because we want s uh, survivors to always be able to get past the killer or because we don't like you know standing menacingly in the staircase, which I think is a great horror movie moment. Usually, like you should be able to get a hit, you know? So is there a way to kind of going around or, um, so or for the killer side? I'm saying. I, th I think, well, I mean, if, if you know what's going on, you can probably, you know, back and forth a little bit and block them for some time. But it's not about, like, you can't block them infinitely there. Like the guy from Zelda? Like the guy from Zelda. That guy made me so mad. <laughs> Let me pass! <laughs> Couldn't get around him. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we have the technology now. I think we're perfectly willing to tweak uh, numbers and possibly look into other, ca other cases where we might want to use this. And we're also aware of the uh, map locations where the system is no longer sufficient. Like, for example, there are some narrow doors. Door frames. Door frames. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. we don't have doors in Dead by Daylight. Nope. Um, there are some narrow door frames on certain maps at the basement entrances mm -hmm. where killers can still stand. We're aware, and we will do something about it, but I don't have a date for you. No dates. No dates. Sorry about that. 
Uh, here's something that I am personally extremely excited about. We restored the bone rattle noise at the beginning of the Wraith's cloaking animation. And you might say, why does that matter? Well, I'll tell you why that matters. Tell you why it matters. Because it sounds basically exactly the same as a Wraith doing an attack. And if you're, let's say, being chased by a Wraith and you hear the Wraith doing his attack, well, you might say, oh, it's time to dead hard. Oh, it's time to drop this pallet. It's time to act like I'm getting attacked. But wait, you just got tricked by the bell tech, and I'm so glad that it's back. Wonderful. Um, there you go. Uh, also, we improved uh, this. By the way, when I say bell tech, it's because some players used to use this technique a long time ago before uh, the sound was removed. Mm -hmm. um, but it's going to be better than it ever was because of another small change that was oh, added yeah. at the same time. When canceling the Wraith's cloaking interaction, i.e. letting go of the button, uh, players will now be able to attack or interact immediately rather than having to wait for the bell stowing animation to finish. Because when we added the bell, and for those who are new to the game, for quite a long time, the Wraith's invisibility bell was invisible. <laughs> you couldn't see it. It's true. Uh, <laughs> so when we added like the this. bell, we also added an animation where he, he takes it out and he puts it away. Now, while he was playing that animation, you weren't able to attack. So if you let go of the button, there was a small delay while you were doing your bell stowing animation and you could not attack. Uh, we have just made it such that you can cancel that animation by attacking. So um, have fun with that. Wraiths, go out, bell tech. Enjoy. Kill some survivors. Uh oh. Uh, we got another nice one here. This is something I heard about a lot. Fixed an issue that could cause the spirit's idle sound effects to play multiple times at the same time. Uh, notably, when you start your haunting, which yes. is really the last time that you'd want it to announce what you were doing. Uh, we took, I think, two different cracks at this. Cracks because it's a crackling noise. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Woo! <laughs> there was a note about this in a previous patch. Uh, I would say it half fixed it. Uh, we got the rest of it uh, in this one. Woo. So spirits, uh, go haunt. Very good. That's a good fix. There was an adjustment to the deranged pursuit achievement. By the way, this is not the whole patch list. I'm, al I'm almost done, I swear. Yeah, this is the patch <laughs> notes for the mid-chapter. These are my personal favorite yeah. notes. Yeah. It, this, is, uh, this is not even half of what we changed. No. The, the list is so long. It's so long. I want to copy and paste it every time I see a, a, a we don't bug fix on okay. the forums. Anyway, <laughs> so <laughs> that's, a different, that's a different issue. Yo, deranged it's pursuit. If, you're, if you are a legion and you like achievements, uh, this is for you. This is for you. The, dera the deranged pursuit achievement used to be extraordinarily difficult to get. Yes. Uh, it's been it's been simplified. It now does what it's originally said on the tin. You just got to down somebody who has deep wounds on them. Lovely. You don't have to down them by reapplying deep wounds. It's good. Uh, okay. Ash's hand. His We've, puppet hand. His puppet hand. Ashy slashy. My personal favorite cosmetic in the game. If you don't have it, you better get it. Is now <laughs> you it, it holds it holds the items in its mouth. <laughs> it's wonderful. No, I love this change. I was so happy to see it happening. It's basically the best thing that's ever happened in the game. You put a puppet in the mouth. Clown Mori. That's yeah. all I have to say. And Clown Mori. Uh, I just I just thought that was really important. Um, then we've got. That's it. Uh, yeah, that's, that's okay. what, that's I, I, I think that's uh, those. Those are my personal favorite changes. This is McLean's top twenty. So, there you go. So I think we less than 20 we talked here. about a little bit about the feature that uh, cancels the game if the player don't load in it. Yep. Yes. Uh, you explained uh, what the line "adjust controller input to improve mo movement control" means. Yep. Because it was a bit confusing. Yep. Um, Optimization. Yeah. Because uh, we do have some news in the dev update, but we can still talk about it a little bit here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, we're finally really starting to see the effect of the optimization work that's being done. Uh, I've seen some very, very smart people doing some very hard work all across the game uh, to optimize all kinds of features in it. Um, there's like uh, in, in animation, in like perks, gameplay stuff, graphics stuff, they're pouring all over it, finding ways to make it do more with less. And uh, I think we're finally starting to see the results out there live. I'm hearing uh, PS4 and Xbox players are saying, oh, hey, it's, it's running better since the update. Yes, Woo! and the uh, June update, uh, what we're testing right now is really is going to be a huge step yeah. as well, a, a big, big, big step. 
I'm so, excited. Wonderful. Yes, it's great. Thank you to the optimization team. There's, if you're listening. As far as I know, five people working on this full time. That's yeah. that is wonderful. Awesome. Uh, then emblems, ranks, and pips. Uh, this is the only subject we didn't um, uh, make like an update on in the dev update because we talked about it last month. And right now, it was a bit conf confusing on the results. So that's why I'm asking you guys today. Uh, the change we did back back then was to uh, allow survivors to rank up a little bit easier. Right. Right. To mm -hmm. rebalance a little bit our, um, mm -hmm. our matchmaking and also uh, allow people to get in the higher ranks. Now, what are the next steps? Uh, we will be readjusting the emblems themselves. I know that uh, Ethan, for example, is looking at these things at the moment, and we are, we are looking at this stuff. Um, when we're looking at Gatekeeper or Lightbringer or whatever the case may be, trying to make sure that people are getting uh, scored based off of different types of play styles. Mm -hmm. uh, earlier we talked about a runner, uh, and the fact that they might not be getting points, you know, sure. while everyone else is doing generators, but they're clearly occupying the killer. Uh, we might be adding uh, some incentives or extra ways to score these people while they're doing these types of things. I'm not going to go into any details. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be vague. I'm sorry. But there will be more things Vagueness. coming in this regard. I can, I can only confirm that we've been having lots of really interesting discussions about the emblems, how they work, how we'd like them to work, what the short, medium, and long-term plans for emblems and ranking are. That sounds wonderful. There's lots of cool stuff coming. It's true. All right, so uh, Killer's done. Specifically, Enduring. Yeah, yes. Yes. What's happening with that? Oh, so you want to talk about the changes that are coming? Yeah. OK. Do you guys really want to hear about enduring changes? I'm sure they do. <laughs> I'm sure they do. OK. <laughs> so That would be so mean. Like, do you really <laughs> want to hear about it? Well, you're not. Yeah, so next question. Next question. And no, we we're kidding. And we're back. We've, uh, we've had some like philosophical discussions about like what is even a stun. Um, like, well, what's, what's a stun in our game, That's right? what they do, <laughs> philosophy, we, during we sat the, down and we're like, <laughs> all day, every what day. What is a what stun? What is a stun? Like, we started with just, there's, we know that hit, getting hit by a pallet is a, a stun. Clearly. That was like, the stun. Mm -hmm. But then, what about when you get hit by a pallet and somebody wriggles off your shoulder because of it? Is that a stun? Is it what considered about, a stun? What about when somebody decisive strikes you? Is that a stun? But what about when someone flashlights you and you're not holding somebody? Is that a stun? But what about oh, when somebody it. flashlights and you are holding somebody? Is that a stun? So you guys have been doing a lot of um, review on what is what yeah. on a lot of things in design. Yeah. So what is a stun? <laughs> so you know that's a really interesting question that we're not even going to answer today. What we are going to answer is something <laughs> philosophical answer to the question that hurts. Something more practical, which is what do what affects stuns in the game? There's one really big one, the elephant in the room, the hillbilly in the room, enduring. You see how he did that? That yes. was wonderful. Yes. Uh, enduring reduces the length of stuns. And oh, oh. There's, sorry, it increases your recovery rate from stuns Thank you. by 75%. Yeah. Now, if we were going to use a terminology that was slightly unclear, I wish we'd also used a number that was easier to understand. If we had said 100%, <laughs> then people would have said, ah, OK, well, it can't be a zero second stun. So I guess that means you recover twice as fast. So I know that the opposite of twice is half. So that way, I you get a half length stun. You're losing me right now. But we went. We made it even worse because we picked seventy-five percent, and never, nobody knows what the opposite of seventy-five percent is. Well, I mean, maybe some mathematicians out there. Maybe we have Matt some Mench, G math man two hundred shout out. Here we go. He's gonna, he's gonna be so mad or happy. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, he uh, so uh -huh. so seventy-five percent was possibly a confusing number. So there are two things that are gonna happen to enduring. Two things. One of them is we're gonna be extremely clear about what it affects. Which is, do you want to say? It's only going to affect pallets. Only pallet stuns. OK. Flip and table. Why? Because that's what it's for. Yes. OK. And this way, we can actually go back and look at all these other things where we're like, is this a stun? Is this not a stun? And then how long should it be? And it turns out that um, changing the length of a two second stun off a pallet by half is a completely different beast than changing the length of a five second stun off an old decisive strike. Yeah. So it wasn't scaling well. 
it was constraining us for all the other types of effects we wanted to do. Now we can say, all right, palette stuns are affected by enduring. Nothing else is. We can go back to those things and say, what is actually the value that we want on this? Because yeah. we've been having trouble saying, well, okay, it, can, it has to be this or this. So we pick two numbers and maybe one overshoots, one undershoots. And that's not a good place to be. Sometimes there are values that really only have a very narrow range of valid gameplay. And stuns quite often are in there. Like there's a good length for a stun. Like, which, like wiggle freeze, so like, specifically? Like wiggle freeze. They really don't want to be any longer or shorter than yeah. they are. Because right? uh, you want to give the, the player enough time to get away. But not so much it's impossible to yes, catch up. Exactly. So, uh, so, like, so why now changing this? I uh, wish we'd done it earlier. Yeah. Uh, it, even before the DS change? I guess the DS change is what sparked a lot of the conversations. It yeah. kind of really brought it in focus that this is something that we can't just keep kicking down the road. Mm. Like it really is important to get this straight. So up. what about head-on stun, for example, for the four people that can pull them up? <laughs> well, uh, th that was actually really good because at first um, in this discussion we were thinking, okay, well, a head-on stun is a physical stun, a lot like a pallet stun. Let's just throw it in there. It makes sense. Uh, pallet stuns and head-on stuns. But there's two problems. One is, what if we keep adding new stuff that's kind of like head-on, and we have to keep going back and changing, enduring, and changing, enduring? That kind of design isn't sustainable. No. Um, the other problem is, it's actually not the same case at all. I think you had to explain this to me, was that when you pallet stun somebody, there's a pallet between you and the killer. Yeah. Uh, when you head-on somebody, there's not. So we're, this isn't really supposed to be the same length stun. It doesn't need to be affected the same way. Yeah. Well, OK, so let's say we agree enduring only uh, is pallets. usable on pallets. Mm -hmm. Do we change any numbers on that? Because right now yes. it feels like, OK. Yes. yes. There we go. So now if we were using the current terms, it would increase the stun by 100%. It, but we're not going to do that. No, we're because not going to do that. It's going to, it's going to say reduced pallet stuns by 50%. There you go. So uh, if, you guys knew how to, if you guys knew the math before, that 75% would bring it down to 1.14 seconds yeah. of a pallet stun. Now half of two seconds is one, one second. One second. So this is a slight buff to enduring. I was going to say translation. Now you're going to get more of it on pallet stuns yep. yeah. and none of it on other type of stuns. Slightly stronger. So for the record, uh, we're basically taking it from the, the, if the effective rate was 43% previously. We're getting some stairs from outside the room. Well, we're talking about enduring. Oh. It, come <laughs> okay. on, come on in. So I'm sure people want to see you. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's go. Come say hi. He's the, the internet's favorite man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you got the coaty butt. You got well, the beer. There you go. Anyway, all of which is to say. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's it. That was it. Hi, Matt. What, what Thanks for stopping by. Uh, no. <laughs> Big news, by the way. <laughs> yeah. no, I'm just kidding. I, <laughs> Don't I them like that. <laughs> okay, uh, from 43% to 50%, pallet stuns only. That's the news about enduring. That's it. Okay, thank you for that. Woo. Now we're going to go to the Q&A because we have a ton of questions. It's already halfway there for the stream. And I'm sure we have a lot more to go through. So um, we opened the Q&A post on uh, the forums. We gathered a few questions, specific questions on Legion, and game Collapse <laughs> slash Pig, and a lot of MISC questions. So we're going to start with the Legion so. questions. Yeah. Will you guys be looking into reworking Legion's pin add-ons? I'd hate to bring up more questions about Legion's with what you guys have to deal with, but I've been curious as to what the plan will be with these add-ons. As of right now, they don't seem to compete well with the cooldown add-ons with their current state. I think that's an accurate assessment. They, they don't seem perhaps quite as appealing as some of the more straightforward add-ons because of the kind of hoops that you have to, to jump through to get them. Oh, absolutely. So uh, obviously, I think it's, it's no big surprise if there were to be changes to these add-ons, it would be to remove the requirement that the survivor already has deep wounds. Yes. So the idea would be if you hit them while in Feral Frenzy, you afflict them with this debuff. Exactly. Yeah. Um, we, we were not saying that this is happening. We don't even have a date for that. Nope. But we're, we are keeping an eye on the Legion and his add-ons, and we do think that's valid feedback. And so if these have to be changed, that is the most likely change. Um, any you. plans to increase Legion Feral Frenzy running and vaulting speed? Uh, 
I'm not sure if we're going to actually be increasing the speeds. Um, we will be looking at the animations, though, uh, to make sure that they feel more smooth, mm. uh, ultimately, with whatever d we do decide. Yeah. Uh, right now, it's a bit sluggish yeah. when you hit it. We've heard some people say they specifically like going over a, a palette. They, you know, some people think, ah, oh, it feels a little sluggish. You know? Yeah, well, I don't know if you remember the old medium vault. And the old medium vault was basically a slow vault sped yeah. up. Yeah. Uh, you felt pretty sluggish. And when you get the actual uh, new medium vault that has the speed that would be in respect to the speed that you were actually moving at, it feels a lot better. It feels a lot smoother. We're looking to do the same thing for the Legion at some point. No dates. Cool. So basically, you're reviewing animations to match the speed that you're really going to. Yes. So it doesn't feel that sluggish. More relative. Yes. More Einstein. Cool. Um, why did you decide to, meet, to make Legion lose the entire Feral Frenzy meter on a miss? I've never played PTB since I'm on a console, but I, if I recall correctly, this wasn't the case in the PTB. It was in the PTB. Uh, so we have an answer here, straight from our designer, who isn't with us. I'm just going to read it. Isn't with us. He's not here with us I right now. I think he's on the chat, actually. But oh. he's, I've seen yeah. him earlier. Okay. Ethan. He's still alive, don't worry. <laughs> That's what I meant. And then, like, he's... One of the main abuses from Old Legion was restarting Feral Frenzy soon after losing it. We want any decision oh you make God. while in Feral Frenzy to have possible serious consequences. <clears throat> losing Feral yes. Frenzy in any remaining charge makes missing a seriously dangerous proposition. That makes it very worthwhile for a survivor who manages to draw the myths and contributes to the sense that Legion's power is not just an automatic hit. Okay, so again, playing the devil, devil's advocate here, yep. um, we had a lot of feedback specifically from uh, players on console yep. about missing hits, yep. yes. because it's harder with controller. It is absolutely harder to be precise with your hit aiming on console. It's something that we're aware of. Mm -hmm. It's I, part of the sensitivity increase that we're looking at as well, yep. uh, to try to make it easier to maneuver. Um, but the problems right now we're handling are across all SKUs. Yep. I don't know if you were going to add anything to that. Right. You might want to explain what a skew is. Oh, across <laughs> all platforms? Sure. So yeah, like basically on, on, <laughs> on Steam, on uh, consoles. Yeah. Uh, that's PS4 and Xbox for you at home. Yeah. All right. Where were we? Endgame Collapse <laughs> slash Pig. Yeah. Why didn't you guys just extend the timer for Endgame Collapse when someone has a reverse bear trap like you did when someone is on the hook? It's definitely something we looked at. Uh, we, it wasn't like an easy decision. No. Um, the, the, the issue with being trapped and only having a short amount of time left to take the trap off, um, one of the things that seems icky from a game design perspective is having two different timers on you. They're, they're, you have to deal with the reverse bear trap timer and the end game timer. Uh, so that's not really a balance issue. I'm not saying that it couldn't work out balance-wise. I'm just saying like from a, from a design perspective, you'd really want to give players one thing to focus on for this kind of thing. If you've got like one sort of Damocles over your head, that's cool. If you've got multiple swords, uh, that's a bad reference, I'm sorry. But if you've got multiple <laughs> things to if you've got multiple things to worry about at the same time, it, it kind of clutters the, the design space a little bit. Um, but it is something that we, we took seriously. We got a lot of feedback about this change. Uh, so there's nothing to announce about it. Just know that we know. We know. We know. All right. Another question about pig. Yes. Are you considering making pigs reverse bird trap less RNG dependent? What's an Ooh. RNG? <laughs> Random number generator. Oh, cool. Oh, damn. Okay. So there's there is uh, there is some randomness in the pig, but I don't think it's where pe some people think it is. So here's a little uh, lesson about how the pig works. Despite what you may have read on the internet. There is no <laughs> dice roll. There is no dice roll when you uh, try to remove the reverse bear trap at a jigsaw box. Um, when they are created, every reverse bear trap puts a key in one of the boxes. So this is at the beginning of the match. At the beginning of the match. Not like when we made the pig. Correct. Okay. Correct. Just checking. And yeah, we have a, a limited number. We're gonna run out of jigsaw boxes <laughs> in 2021. Anyway, so. Uh, Every time the match starts, we put a key for every reverse bear trap in one of the jigsaw boxes that is on the map. One jigsaw box can have multiple keys in it. Ooh, sneaky. Right. Um, that's so that you can't track which boxes have been used and like cross them off your patrol. Especially like in uh, Survive with Friends thing. Exactly. I use the box by the shack. Yeah, now you, exactly. Mm -hmm. It could be abused by survivors or, or by the killer. It's true. Yeah. So uh, the way it works is you 
fully charge up the jigsaw box, and then it checks, ah, <laughs> is this the box that has your key or not? And that's it. There is no under the hood tomfoolery to try to make it so that you will get it in X attempts. If you are a neat statistician, then knowing what I just told you, you will be able to give players actually a like statistical distribution of how many boxes you can expect to open before you find the key that you're looking for. I'm not gonna get into it here, but that's how it works. So if we were to reduce the RNG, that would be by removing that system and actually saying, okay, well, we'll give you an increasing chance as you open more boxes, but that actually, I don't think it would give people what they expect, and I don't expect us to do it anytime soon. Um, we are aware that this feels more random than many other killers' mechanics, and that's kind of the way it is at the moment. It is. Well, like the Trapper Trap. It's somewhat similar to the Trapper Trap. Yeah, 32 although, tries or one. Although his is affected by the luck stat. That's also true. There's a luck stat in Dead by Daylight. <laughs> Are we getting into this right now? No. Salty lips. Okay. Oh, good. No, so. <laughs> no, but there you go. Uh, so there's no current plans to change the randomness in the pig's reverse bear trap, but it is a great question, and I'm glad we could talk about it. All right, so uh, let's jump into some uh, misc questions. Uh, about the game, we have uh, the first questions on sound actually. Uh, here they, they are. are. We almost missed them. <laughs> oh, there you go. He did. He, it. he did the same joke before the stream, and now we're supposed to laugh at it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. Pat is losing her mind. Hilarious. Awesome. So, uh, the sound of survivor footsteps are nearly Love impossible it. to hear even with headphones at high volumes which is the opposite of what the Haddon film music was. Oh yeah. Is this intentional? This is a massive tool taken away from the killer and I think it needs to be addressed. So um, we did address it in the dev update. We know that sounds is something that is um, coming back every single updates we get new, new stuff or difficult stuff to pinpoint. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you want to add something on this. Uh, sometimes, like we can even get some interesting bugs where, like, the grass all of a sudden can occlude the sound, mm -hmm. uh, block the sound. Sorry, when survivors are running, we've put an occlusion pass as well into the game. So mm -hmm. again, blocking with walls or occlusion is a fancy word for blocking. Yes, uh, stopping sound from passing by, uh, based off of you being on the other side of the wall or whatever the case may be. Uh, these are things that are constantly being tweaked. Um, we're looking for a nice place to be in with these things. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, Rest assured, we will be looking yeah. into this and, and uh, trying to give the best experience we yeah. can. And we're also reviewing the, the whole process mm -hmm. in order to react uh, quick quicker to uh, those kind of issues, yeah. so specifically that, sounds, sound issues. Those, uh, those details you can find in our very wonderful dev update from earlier today. Yeah, Check it out. It's on our forums. I yes. think Mubot linked it earlier. Thanks, Mubot. Thank you, Mubot. <laughs> There you are there. Thank you for the buff. Ah. <laughs> All right. When do you plan to give solo, so solo players some information to be equal to survive with friend, like mm -hmm. a being chased icon, totem counter, or a base kit kindred? They said when. That's a dangerous question because we can't give dates. Yes. Uh, it's more like what will we be doing? Um, I, I still li love the idea of the being chased icon mm -hmm. where you actually see the portrait light up depending on who's being chased. This would be shared with the whole team, because in Survive with Friends, you can easily pass on this information yep. from one to another. Uh, we're not sure exactly when this would come. Uh, we've seen plenty of suggestions as well for the totem counter, whether it's put on small game or if it's put directly in the UI. Uh, there are some debates online as to what people want to do, as well as internally. Yep. But we are listening. These are uh, great ideas as well. Um, we're still looking into it. Yep. A uh, question about the plague. Would you consider the plague to be okay where she is right now? You think the nerf to her movement speed while hol holding vile corrupt purge to be necessary? Remember playing her without those, with, with full speed ahead, mm -hmm. holding purge? Yep. Um, uh, yeah, so this, this comes up a lot. And I, I want to say that it's, it's a common misconception that we nerfed the plague before PTP. Because I will explain what the problem we had was. It's that the correct way to play, and it was very clearly the single correct way to play, was to charge your purge, whichever one it was, and then hold it, because there was essentially 
no downside. Yeah. Yep. So basically, the most efficient way to play. Yeah. Right. Uh, you'd be running on the map. You'd already have a charge. This means you didn't have to waste time charging it up. Yeah. While you, when you found a survivor, uh, and, you and then you were able to just puke yeah. uh, on them. Uh, so we saw this was very, very clear. Players picked it up right away. This was the way to play the character. Mm. And it's actually really not what we wanted. We thought there was way more potential for interesting play mm. when players have to decide when is the time to start charging my, my vomit. Meaningful decision. Meaningful decisions. That's what we're looking for. Now, players say, okay, but it was just a nerf. That's not the way that we see it at all. You'd have to look at the numbers. So here comes some math. No. On the PTB, Wait, when you would start charging your purge, here's the number, 2.3 meters per second. And you say, what the heck is that? That's 50% of a regular killer speed. If you're not following, that's 4.6 as a maximum speed. 4.6 meters per second is your, is your maximum killer speed. So you would go down to half your speed while you were charging, and then back up to 4.6 when you had a full charge. Um, so that was very punishing to start your purge, uh, and then you'd have no downside while holding it. So what we did was we bumped up your speed while charging the purge to 3.6, so that you could actually still keep playing while charging. 3.6 is a slowdown. It means you temporarily move a little bit slower than the survivor, but that's only while you are charging it. Once you hit full charge, you go up to 4.4, which is a number you might recognize from the move speeds of uh, the Huntress and the or, hag. or the Hag. Um, or the, the old legion, but we're never going to talk about that again. Um, so what this means is you now have a meaningful decision about when to start charging your, uh, your perch. Um, the fact that you can move at 3.6 meters per second while charging it in the middle of the chase actually makes a big difference after you've puked once. Let's say like, well, I mean, maybe That's I'm true. pointing out the no, obvious. No, I'm sorry. It's just like taking this out of context. I'm sorry. Continue. <laughs> Yeah, you don't, you don't usually have like Olympic speed running speeds mentioned alongside of puking. It's not what you usually see in races. Anyway, um, so it, it actually makes it so it's very possible to puke and then you know, charge your thing again and use it again in a, in a, uh, in a chase, whereas before, if you had to go down to, to 2.4 meters per second... That is significantly slower. Right. Survivors so, move at 4 meters a second, yeah, by the way. Just so I, I really don't see this as a nerf. I think it's a nerf if you had already settled on your play style as a, I always want to be holding the right mouse button. Would you I'm, say that it's almost like a balancing act? I would say it's a balancing Al act. Also, <laughs> it's... <laughs> You weren't sure about the act part. That's the second boo of the entire stream right now. Uh, darn. <laughs> darn. Uh, anyway, so uh, we really like this change. Now the other part, the other half of that question is, uh, do we think she's okay where she is? Does she need buffs to be more powerful? We're kind of looking at all of them right now. We released some interesting stats to the community uh, yes. the other week. And uh, she was not at the top, not at the absolute bottom. I actually don't remember exactly where she was, but maybe on the, the bottom-ish half side at the very least. So that means that we're always kind of looking at them and saying, do these characters need adjustments? We really don't want to jump to any conclusions about that kind of stuff. But know that we are still looking at her as our, as our newest character. We want to make sure that, uh, that she's fun to play and uh, that you can actually get some results with her. Woo! There you go. I think that was awesome. All right. By the way, if you ask McLean to be on the stream, yes. you cannot not expect to not hear numbers. That was a lot of oh, noise. Yeah. I'm sorry. Absolutely. I'm I'm sorry I didn't That's okay. I didn't bring I didn't bring like pictures. Charts? Charts of the charts. numbers. I should have wonderful. I was busy working on stuff I can't talk about yet. <laughs> All right. Wait, although oh. I did bring something. I was gonna say, I thought you had a video or I something. I do, but we got let's, let's get through these miscellaneous questions and okay. <laughs> what a tease. If I we love still it. have some time, I'll show you the videos that I brought. Hang they're in there, friends. They're pretty good. When you rely released the exhaustion nerf, you said perks like Dead Hard that weren't as strong as Sprint Burst would see slight changes to make them better, like reduce exhaustion, if I remember correctly. You still got any plan of doing some changes, or will those perks remain as they are? That's a great question. It's a great question. So uh, we looked at Dead Hard, and we looked at uh, Sprint Burst, and Life, and Balance Landing. And yeah. Not head on because it wasn't there yet. Yeah. The real answer is yes. We said that. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. we did I, say I, I we did say that. that. Um, I, I I think Dead Hard is in a very good place at the moment. Uh, I think it's. Uh, I don't know if you guys agree. Uh, I think the stats had indicated as such as well. Yeah. Um, I don't think it needs a reduced cooldown at the moment uh, in comparison to the other exhaustion uh, perks as well. Yeah. Uh, we'll constantly be looking at these types of things. 
but I think they will be staying as they are for the moment. Yeah. So no current plans to change the exhaustion duration on the different exhaustion perks? Yes, exactly. Cool. Cool. Um, are there any plans to make quality of life changes to head on? It seems that even if the conditions are right, sometimes the perk doesn't proc, and it's frustrating. Yes. Yes. So, that's true. Is that it? Okay, no. Yeah, uh, that was the question. So, was it? Uh, well, I thought the answer was not every time. Uh, so head on quality of life changes right now. Um, head on is not used, just like as one little thing, head on does not work when you have crows above your head. So when you are um, exposed to the killer in that regard, not actually exposed, but that on crows. purpose? Uh, yes, it was on purpose. Um, there are certain conditions to a proc head on as well, uh, which are not very clear to the players uh, that we see, right? So. Uh, to go through a few of them, mm -hmm. there is a zone in front of the uh, locker where the killer has to be within while you activate head-on, yep. right? And then when you jump out, you will stun. And the hitbox is only active for the moment that you activate the perk. Exactly. So the killer has, has to be within the stun zone when you activate the uh, stun. Yep. Now, what does that mean? Well, uh, we're going to be looking into this and trying to change it. Yep. We're testing some stuff out. Uh, at the moment, or at least rolling some ideas in our brain. Um, one of the ideas is every time you do a rush action, instead of them having to be within the conditions, mm -hmm. uh, whenever you jump out of a locker fast, you will perform head-on. So that means your fast jump out of a locker will be replaced with head-on. So uh, still on a cooldown, though. Still yes. on a cooldown and <laughs> after just, three seconds. Just so the difference. You, don't, you guys don't think yeah. that it's like a permanent head-on and it's like... Yeah, yeah, Locker sorry. hill. The difference here <laughs> being that instead of a killer needing to be in the zone before you do the head on rush, you can just do it, and then we would keep the hitbox active during the duration of the head on action. Yeah. Animation? During, or, yeah, yeah. Like during the duration of the animation. So while you're, while you're doing the charge out, the thing will stay active so that you'll be able to stun any killer during the duration of the thing. So you'll probably get closer to what you would expect. Yeah. Because right now you can. You can get weird situations where the, the killer kind of dips out of the zone right after you've activated the thing, mm -hmm. and you don't stun them, and you're like, what's going on? Or you're getting hit by the killer when you think, I should have canceled that attack with my stun. So hopefully this should help to alleviate that. However, we don't have a date on that yet. No date. There's no commitments on this yet. No. Just know that we've been looking at this perk and think that it can be improved, and this is what we're currently looking at. Absolutely. Your, um you remember when we presented head-on the first time? Apply directly to forehead? Yes. It's still going on. We still change the text in the game. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I've seen a lot of questions about um, dailies, and we didn't really touch Medal of Men. But first, I think you had something that you wanted to show? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, I have no idea what it is. It's going to be a surprise for me, too. I oh, these are my favorite. I didn't now want I'm to, a bit scared. I didn't want to come empty-handed. Uh, I didn't want to be a bad guest, yeah. so we'll, I was we'll uh, scrounging around to see what I would have had lying around. And what I found was some in-development uh, footage of the plague. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, I found some, some uh, behind-the-scenes <sighs> footage of the plague uh, from when I was working on it as an early prototype. And I thought I would share with you what it looked like when I was working on the power in the early I days. I hope to see I'm this. sorry, I but right I'm now see. I think everyone in the chat was expecting darn different news. So it's okay, it's cool, we're gonna look at it. We're gonna also- Remember the plague? <laughs> we're gonna also address that other thing after. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Wait, what? I do have a page on this. That's all it says. All right, all right, so this, this is uh, what it looked like. <laughs> what it looked like in the early days when I was working on this uh, this vomit. Oh power. yeah, I remember. <laughs> Back when it was just a green laser beam. Oh, look at that. Yeah. The you were painting cheese. the wall. Yeah. We had this. This it's a string trees is a good is a good word for it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think this was the the first person view. Where's my first person view? It Come back. Some obvious people in chat are like, "Well, that's the doctor, guys." When we are working on the prototype. That's what it looks like. Check yeah. out his wiffle bat. That's my favorite part. <laughs> That's yeah, what so, it looks like. Yeah, so this is this is what it looked like early uh, early on. The the first the first um, uh, spirit <laughs> prototype was. Oh, I think we definitely want to catch the beginning of this one because oh, Jesus. this is uh, this is what the sickness meter used to look like. I'm gonna bleed. I'm gonna oh, bleed. shoot. 
<laughs> Wait, let's, I want to see this one from the beginning. Though. I forgot. I forgot that you had done this. Yeah, and that's actually actually the very very first version of the mesh. All right. So yeah, there used to be like a three stage yeah. illness, which would do different things to you. So that was like stage fancy, one. Like was holding that butt. I'm gonna poop. Oh, okay. <laughs> he also, he also I, the bar. I had not seen that yeah, before. This, this one didn't last for a My favorite part is that you make I made him crouch. <laughs> <laughs> what yeah. madness. Yeah, well, ma is, was that a joke because he used the so, madness? Yes, yeah, so that was a joke. Are you telling us that we're allowed to have fun when we work here? Yeah. <gasps> what? I, that, that was a lot of fun, actually. There you go. So it would damage you <laughs> after you, you fit the I'm gonna bleed. <laughs> that was really cool. Oh. oh yeah, and that's just uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know what that is. I just thought I'd share it. That's wonderful. I I don't remember why I took a screen cap of this, but I thought it was important. So there you go. The eyes are, are what's making it. I yeah. think you can really look into its soul, its soul, because we really don't know what it is. There you go. All right, that's it. That's what I brought. I hope you enjoyed it. All right. Wonderful. Um, about Freddy, really, really quickly, uh, we gave an update in the dev update, which is basically not a real update. It's just telling you we're working on a gameplay reveal. Soon, TM. Don't hurt me, please. Oh. Woo! And that's all we can say today about Freddy. So that's uh, that's 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 that. People jump on it. They're like Freddy time. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. Bad. I. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm the bearer of bad news or good news if you think about like, hey, we're gonna have a gameplay reveal. We will. You're gonna know soon. Yeah. Soon, TM. Anyways, on this, uh, I've seen a lot of chatter about dailies in the chat today. I don't know if you guys have anything to bring for that. Which dailies? Which dailies? The dailies in our game. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, that would be wonderful. Uh, <laughs> this is a surprise as well, but we were not ready for this. So if you're not ready, it's OK. There are some things that were. I'd, uh, I'd been holding on to some old dailies for a really long time. The. Uh, the ones that used to give you like like fifteen thousand. <laughs> no shit, the hundred thirty five one, hundred thirty five k. No, 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 no. Did no, no. You oh, the really, really, old, really, like really old ones. Because I, n I never, ever, ever, ever claim dailies. I don't know why I just didn't do it. And then once I remembered that I should be claiming them, I had these really, really old ones. And every time people would see them, they'd be like, "Wow, McLean, where are those dailies from?" And I'll be like, "These are vintage dailies. <laughs> vintage. You can't get them anymore." <laughs> and then over the weekend, <laughs> I was quitting out of the game. And I just accidentally hit the, the claim all button. And they're gone, and I can't ever get them back. But you have them on stream. You've, you've locked the VODs, right? Maybe. Maybe. Oh my god, i got to get home and lock my VODs. You anyway, so uh, that's, not, that's not that important. I'm sorry, it just reminded me. Mm -hmm. um, so dailies are uh, an interesting system. They're a great way to get people uh, invested and in playing more often and give them some more blood points. Uh, I don't think we have anything new to announce about what's coming with them, but we like let's say that they're not in their final ever form. Like there's lots more that can be done with the system. Their final form, I love that. The final form. Look Is for next form soon. Is everything ever in their final in its final form? As a live product, no. No. Nope. No. <laughs> Anyways, uh, really quickly because we have like less than ten minutes left. Uh, Medal of Man, we talked about it today in the dev update. There mm -hmm. was a lot of chatter over it. Mm -hmm. uh, we're testing a new. Uh, version of it. There are maybe other uh, version we're gonna test. I don't know. I've been told. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> so, uh, so do you want to just discuss it a little bit? Why are we looking into those changes? The the dev update mentioned a, a possible version where it was specifically checking for protection hits. Yes, yes sir. The same as what we did for We're Gonna Live Forever. Although We're Gonna Live Forever also triggers off of a couple other things. Yes, unhooks. Right, like unhooks. Yes, safe unhooks. Safe unhooks. So uh, I know last time we chatted, you were telling me about perhaps we can in fact just reuse the conditions for we're going to live forever. Yep. Say these are the kinds of protecting your teammate actions, and why don't we use them for other perks? Metal Man seems like a good place to uh, to put that. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. There's been some chatter about you know like what happens now? Am I going to have to target the mm -hmm. unhooked instead of the unhooker? Uh, naturally, you're going to learn this as you go along in the game. Not everyone's going to have Metal of Man. Uh, I don't think that the appeal is going to be as high as it was before. I think this is natural. Um, but I think it would probably be in a healthier place mm -hmm. uh, using protection hits. Now, with that being said, I've also seen that protection hits are a bit wonky at the moment. Yeah, maybe this would be a great opportunity to go back and check out that protection score yeah. event. So that's what we're looking into as yeah. well. Uh, I don't know exactly if we'll nail it down, but we do have uh, some avenues to explore. Yes. So the feedback that we really looked into it was the fact that uh, uh, it Survivors be. were getting the the positive effect without having to do anything for it, yeah. basically. Essentially. Yeah. So now we're just making the same thing, same 
final, um, yeah. you know, like positive side, but you yeah. have to work differently to get yeah. it. I yeah. think I think being or able actually. being able to tank a hit feels very powerful for a survivor. It's something that as a survivor player, I really want to have. Um, I think that it's fair to ask a player to jump through some hoops, do some things, perform some altruistic actions, gain the power, and then use it. Uh, also, I think that it's going to make it a little bit more interesting, perhaps a little bit more unpredictable for killers, because they're not necessarily going to know exactly how many protection hits plus, yep. let's say, unhooks, if we're using that kind of condition. Uh, so I think it, uh, it's going to be interesting. I agree. All right. Yeah. Um, we're going to go over a little bit. We talked about a hotfix earlier, and uh, Peanut sent us a, a couple of changes that are upcoming in the hotfix. Oh that uh, we think would be interesting to mention today. So first, uh, yes, we have a tentative fix for the, um, the survivor no. <laughs> completing a generator for the point generation. So there's a, there's a probable fix that is coming for that. Not out yet. Not out yet in the next uh, odd fix update. Mm -hmm. um, tentatively fixed an issue that could cause match canceled message to appear when the killer disconnects during a match. So we had this happened to in a few um, in a few games so people would see oh uh, you know killer left but at the same time it seems like we didn't load in the game but that's obviously not what was happening uh, fix an issue that could cause an infinite loading screen when a client lost network connection while loading into a match so infinite loading screens it's something we are constantly trying to uh, fix there's multiple causes to that issue, and we just got one down. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, fix an issue that caused auras to appear very dim in the map Mount Ormond Resort. Ah, celebration. Wow. Yes, that's something that yes. a lot of people were asking for. Uh, added extra logging to help identify the issue with the entity blocker, sometimes not blocking windows with and without bamboozle. Mm, yeah. And I think that we have a note as well for uh, NIA players that are wearing the uh, prestige outfit that was not uh, bloody anymore, basically. So that's the, we're going to have a fix for that. Great. We had a lot of complaints about this. Hot sauce. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so um, for us, I think that's pretty that's much it, it for I went, today. I went through all my papers. I love it. Yeah. Wait. I'm going to put the right one in the back. Perfect. So uh, I hope you guys had uh, fun. Because yeah, we did. I had fun. <laughs> I fun. had fun. Um, <clears throat> and I hope that we answered a lot of your questions. Don't forget there's the dev update. There's a lot more answers over there as well on what's coming and what we're doing for fixes. And we're constantly looking everywhere to try to find, uh, you know, new bugs, origin of bugs, fixing stuff. So, thank you for joining us today, guys. Thank you for having us. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Thank you for joining us as well. Oh, yeah. Merci, Pat. <laughs>